So rather than have melee and primary weapon sections in every metagun video I make going forward, I decided to just make a single general video on each of these topics. In this guide, I'll go over each of medic's melee options and synergies or lack thereof with the four metaguns. If you don't care about the nitty gritty and unique strategies involved, I'll summarize the conclusion now. Use the uber saw if you want to try for big plays or the enemy team is terrible for the extra snowballing potential. Else use the solemn vow for the extra utility it provides. There isn't any good rationale to using the other melees, but if you want to hear the reasoning behind my opinions, stay tuned or skip to the relevant section in the video. One last thing before we begin. As with all my videos, I am coming at this from a casual perspective, and what I find to be good or bad in casual cannot necessarily be extrapolated to a competitive environment. Playing solo queue casual medic is a very different experience than playing medic with the constant communication of sixes. As such, weapon strengths and weaknesses can be exaggerated or diminished depending on team comps and skill level. It turns out for medic melees, there isn't much of a difference between casual and competitive, but the casual perspective will become more apparent in future videos on other topics. <laughs> it's that simple, lad. For many classes, stock melee isn't a bad option at all. Demoman and Sniper come to mind as they don't really have alternatives without at least some drawback. However, Medic is not a damage class, meaning any weapon with a DPS related negative essentially has no downside. In the world of Medic melees, this means all except the Vitasaw have negligible swing speed or damage penalties, making them an objective direct upgrade from stock. Even the Vitasaw is debatably a better option considering the situations where you need melee are life or death. Simply put, do not use stock melees on Medic. They're already past it. Every Medic below you, yeah, there. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, get out of your, your truck. Gamers, I'm gaming. Game. The Ubersaw grants the medic 25% uber charge on a successful hit at the cost of 20% swing speed. 25% is massive and unsurprisingly makes the Ubersaw a very strong option. As I discussed previously, medic is not a damage class and shouldn't be taking extended fights anyways, so the downside is pretty much non-existent. I know that I'm beating a dead horse telling you the Ubersaw is good. Everybody already knows this and everybody already uses it. So instead, I'll dive right into some niche tech that the weapon enables. Make sure to mentally keep track of your uber percent so you know if a hit gets you to full charge. Schmooving in for a hit then switching and popping stock or quick fix can save your life and make a fat play in the right situation. You can also switch to your uber saw during an uber, extending it for 2 seconds per hit as seen by the enemy medic I am fighting in this clip. Just make sure you don't die in the process when you momentarily lose in vulnerability. An uber saw hit will also always give you a vaccinator bubble so you can switch and pop for the extra survivability in tense situations. Although I do have to point out that the Vaccinator's absurd build rate does somewhat devalue the 25%, only saving you 6 seconds of building. Hitting Cloak Spies or invulnerable enemies such as a Bonking Scout will still grant the Uber, but Disguise Spies will not. Right clicking with the Uber Saw equip will perform the Spinal Tap Taunt kill, and if you manage to kill somebody with it, you will receive an entire uber in return unless you kill a disguise spy, which will only give 50% for some odd reason. One last notable synergy is Heavy's Holiday Punch. Taunting enemies are easy to hit a few times or even taunt kill for full uber if nobody else is nearby. The uber saw is a potent melee weapon for casual play, but I must caution you do not let it bait you. The 25% is highly tempting and can certainly change the tide of battle, but only take it when enemies give it to you don't go around looking to start melee fights as a medic. Even though this thing random crits more often than a Dust Bowl demo, don't take a fight unless you will win without the crit. Dying on medic is likely far more detrimental to your team than getting that 25% will be beneficial, so be patient and be smart. Overall, the Ubersaw is best paired with a stock metagun. It's slightly worse on the quick fix and is not as strong on crits or vaccinator since getting a pop with those metaguns won't easily save your life in a clutch situation. That's gotta be. Yeah. Oh, right, now, this, now. this engine Ooh. bopped his DR too. Doink! All right, dude, let's jump in. Let's I'm jump in and start pushing the cart. I'm going for the cart. 
All right, I got 90%. Nice, baby. The Solemn Vow grants you the permanent passive bonus of seeing enemy health values and uber charge percents when you mouse over them. It's my favorite medic melee, and honestly, most of the time it's much stronger than the uber saw. The uber saw is fantastic, but it thrives off of bad players, which is the reason it's so strong and casual. In any random 12v12 game, there's likely to be at least one lousy spy or scout player there to feed you some uber. But as the enemy skill level increases, the Ubersaw's weakness of needing to hit an enemy with melee as medic becomes apparent. Good players will just not let that happen very often. There's a reason the Solemn Vow has increasingly become meta in sixes after the RGL unbanned last year. And keep in mind, this is in a highly coordinated environment where damage callouts and uber tracking were already the norm. In super disorganized solo queue casual, the information given by the weapon is even more helpful since it's unlikely your teammates will be making any calls at all. I cannot understate how valuable the extra info is as a medic player. You know if your heavy is going to win or lose their engagement. You know when the enemy medic has uber ready to counter your crits crank. You know if the enemy spy was low enough to die to that rocket or if he for sure popped dead ringer. You know if the enemy sniper is under 75 HP and can die to a single crossbow shot. You can almost always know when your team is at advantage or disadvantage just by having this weapon equipped. The Solemn Vow gives you a tremendous amount of information for quite literally zero drawbacks or investment. Maybe the freest upside of any weapon in the game. Yes, the Ubersaw has insane clutch potential, but you can also go five games in a row without it offering any benefit at all because you either don't get a melee off or die shortly after a hit. The Solemn Vow is consistently useful in every single fight and even lets you get a few picks with the crossbow and casual play. Seriously, I'll talk about it a bit more in my upcoming Crusaders crossbow guide, but I seemingly always get around five kills around as medic thanks to the Solemn Vow. The number of times an enemy will just be hanging out in the line of sight at less than 75 health is astonishing, but you'd never even know to go for the crossbow shot in the first place if you had the Ubersaw equipped. For these reasons, I think the Solemn Vow is the clear melee choice on every metagun but stock, where the extra value and clutch potential of the Ubersaw makes it a toss up depending on how much the enemy team is feeding you Uber. If you've always been an Ubersaw Andy, branch out and give this bad boy a try. The Solemn Vow pairs perfectly with Crits or Vaccinator, and is still very solid with Uber or Quick Fix. Give me you fucking... <laughs> oh! Bitch! 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 <laughs> Here's where the more unfortunate half of the video begins. The Amputator just isn't very good, and the Vitasaw is even worse. The Amputator gives up to 3 extra passive health regen per second when active, and an AoE healing taunt for the once again pretty much non-existent penalty of 20% damage. But the plus 3 health per second can save you from afterburn, right? Well, it actually ramps up out of combat like normal passive regen, so it's only 1 extra health per second while burning not enough to always save you. The weapon's unique taunt restores 105 health to nearby allies in line of sight over the 4.2 second duration. The amount of uber built from this healing is cut down significantly, only receiving 1% uber charge per 49 HP heal. A melee weapon that gives medic another healing option does sound enticing on paper, but the risk and opportunity cost is often too high. In situations where a ton of teammates need health, the crossbow will do the job well enough without making you an immobile defenseless target. If the taunt healed you as the medic or could grant overheal to allies, there might be something to this weapon. But as it stands, I can't really recommend it over the better options in any serious situation. Suppose you're really inclined to use it? In that case, the amputator pairs best with the vaccinator, although it still doesn't come close to the ubersaw or solemn vow and has anti-synergy with the quick fix due to the weapon's innate faster heal rate diminishing the usefulness of the taunt. Get away from him. A oh, beast. Oh. 
<laughs> Dude, you just I'm a savant. The Vitasaw gives one organ for every enemy you hit and lets you retain up to 15% of your Metagun's charge on death per organ collected. The catch is the very real and significant minus 10 max health debuff. The Vitasaw is not a good weapon at all, and there's even a decent argument that it's worse than stock on Medic. You may be wondering why I think this weapon is so bad. If you get caught out, you could probably save 15-30% to of your charge, making death a bit less detrimental. Well. That's the problem right there. It's only beneficial if you die, which is number one on your list of things to avoid as medic. The less you die, the worse this weapon gets. If you don't collect any organs or die at all in a match, you're just walking around with a 10 health crutch the entire time. This makes the Vitasaw possibly the only weapon in TF2 that becomes worse the better you get at the game. For a new player that may die more often, I could see it being slightly better than stock melee, but at the same time, they should be aiming to improve, and this weapon's usefulness is inversely proportional to skill. If I see a medic using the Vitasaw, I immediately think they are either memeing or have no idea what they're doing. Don't be that guy and just use stock if you want to be quirky and different from all the Ubersaw Andes. I'll concede that this weapon is terrible but still usable on stock or crits, but I would never even consider it on Quick Fix or Vaccinator. The downside is far too high considering how fast those metaguns build charge. Oh god! Roast them and toast them, Pyro. Oh, he's getting crits. <laughs> I kill him now. I kill his medic too. Oh, can I pick this one up as well? I'll pick him up as well. <laughs> nice quick fix, buddy. <laughs> well, there's my recommendations and guidance on medic's melee options. Basically, use the Ubersaw if you're feeling spicy or just default to the Solemn Vow. If you disagree with me, uh, you're wrong, but feel free to discuss further in the comments. I'll be going over Medic's primary weapons next, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. I also stream pretty often on Twitch if you want to ask me a question live. The link to the channel will be in the description. Thanks a ton for watching, and always remember to keep yapping off. Which is someone up in the store? Nathan, were you yeah, here guys, earlier? Guys, no, dude, this is the first time I've been upstairs. Oh shit, it's cold as fuck in here!